All right, I want to now get to the next problem which is eye movement. So, I talked a little bit about the fact that the eye can move. So, in the picture that I drew before where the eye was facing um, the screen that is all very nice, but a lot of trouble is caused by the fact that the eyes can move and our eyes are moving all the time without us being consciously aware of it. You can command your eyes to move, but when you are not commanding your eyes to move they are moving a lot anyway right they are moving very often doing all sorts of things. And um, I want to classify the different types of eye movements. Before I do that I will first just explain the different eye muscles just to start off. Eye movement. So, let us take imagine the eyeball and you are looking, um, looking straight at the eye. <coughs> we should draw an iris perhaps. So, for each eye there are 6 different muscles that are able to uh, contract or extend and that will allow your eye to rotate. The ways that they pull on the eye there are side ones there is lateral rectus and medial rectus. So, you have two eye muscles for side to side this enables you to do yaw motions with your eyes. So, you can go back and forth like this right. Um, some of these side motions may be necessary for for uh, binocular vision for stereo when you move the depth of an or distance of an object that you are focusing on. However, you may also just want to move from side to side both eyes together in a coordinated way. Um, well, let us see which eye is this lateral I believe this is the right eye because lateral should be off the side and medial should be into the center. So, I believe this is the right eye. Put my label in the wrong place there because I am not going to be able to um, so I am not going to be able to put my remaining muscles. So, there are also some muscles off on the diagonal 4 of them <clears throat> there is a superior I'm not going to go too far on these kinds of things it starts to look like an anatomy class and we are not going to have to worry about too many Latin names, but inferior oblique down here is superior oblique and down here is inferior rectus. So, if the eye is a rigid body how many degrees of freedom does it have for rotation right just as a rigid body before we think about any constraints. 2 really as a rigid body how many degrees of freedom does a rigid body have of rotation 3 3 degrees of freedom right. So, translation part is 3 rotation part is 3. So, there are actually technically 3 degrees of freedom of rotation and there are 3 pairs of muscles that can pull the eye back and forth. So, it can achieve 3 degrees of freedom of rotation however, you are most familiar with it being 2 degrees of freedom it probably seems like 2 degrees of freedom because we can look up and down and we can look side to side, but also when you are converging it turns out there is a little bit of roll happening. So, roughly speaking there are 3 degrees of freedom, but they are mostly constrained to a 2 dimensional surface of rotation. So, it is close to 2 dimensional, but you can make arguments for being slightly 3 dimensional let us say right. So, there is kind of a thin band uh, for the third um, dimension of rotations. So, it does have all of this uh, extra bit of freedom, but you cannot do absolutely wild motions. Um, also, there is very tight coupling between the eye muscles um, from eye to eye as well. You cannot very easily or maybe in any way start look having your eyes look in different directions right. So, so they are they are definitely designed to be coordinated all right. So, the these two side ones 
lateral rectus and medial rectus are for yawing your eyes back and forth and for um, pitching up and down and a little bit of rolling these other four muscles are used. Types of eye movements. So, eye movement let me put this one over here I will call it eye movement muscles and then I will say types of eye movement. types of eye movement. Let me just make a nice uh, 2 by 2 table here. I will put down some names and then I will I um, will show you a couple of short videos and then I will explain these different modes. Um, so, here I will call the motions conjugate. And here I will call them disjunctive. conjugate will mean that both eyes are moving together for whatever the purpose is of the movement they are moving together and disjunctive means that they have um they are they are executing separate motions somehow they are not they are not doing the same motion. And over here for this row I will have voluntary which means that you can consciously control it or involuntary. Um, which means you have little or no ability to control it. All right. So, on the conjugate side we have saccades and pursuit sometimes called smooth pursuit. On the disjunctive side we have convergence. which can be coupled together with the other one that goes here which is divergence they are just opposites of the same thing. These are the motions that happen when we are trying to match stereo maybe that looks like it should be conjugate because they are trying to come together to make stereo, but geometrically in terms of the transforms that are being applied these are different transforms right they are like uh, mirror images. So, um, as far as involuntary we have vestibulo-ocular vestibulo-ocular and optokinetic and one more here micro saccades. So, this is an eye looking at a picture. So, these are uh, saccades the eye is looking around at different places. So, you are pointing the fovea at a bunch of different locations we do this all the time when reading looking at pictures looking at people a close up and um, you may hardly be aware of the different motions that are occurring here. So, that is an example of saccades and then this is how a uh, smooth pursuit looks when your eye is following a moving target. It does look smooth compared to the last one right. In the last case the eye seems to be jumping from place to place quickly trying to fixate to it is like taking a bunch of quick photographs for the first one. This one is more of trying to maintain a stable image on the retina as something is moving. So, one saccades so they involve rapid rapid jerks in the motion <clears throat> All right, So, these jerks they 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 last for um less than 45 milliseconds and during that time they may be as high as 900 degrees per second. So, very fast motions are occurring and as I said that one of the main reasons for doing this while I showed you the video I said that it improves uh, visual acuity it is like you are taking a bunch of high resolution photographs if you like for your for your brain right, to try to take in the whole picture because you cannot take in a high resolution image 
with a very high field of view all at once. Our eyes are just not designed like that. And you get the feeling that it is like that because your brain is doing some kind of repair work to assemble everything together and give you what feels like a high resolution high field of view image of the world. But it the eye does not actually have that based on the way the eye movements occur the way the, the fovea is designed the photoreceptor density all of these things are coming together now and you do not have that. Um there is a fascinating thing that happens here which is um there is a saccadic masking which is that the brain is actually hiding these jerk intervals from your from your memory or from your perception. So, even though these 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 jerky eye motions are happening you do not perceive them at all and even your perception of time is somewhat altered from them. So, because of this you have what is called trans saccadic memory which is a special case of a very general phenomenon that people know in perceptual psychology it is an example of what is called um perceptual perceptual constancy. <clears throat> so, what does that mean? Um you perceive what seems to be a single stationary image when in actuality when performing saccades your eye is moving around all over the place. I had a very I had a very interesting um opportunity um I was at uh, Ludwig Maximilian University in Munich about a month ago and I visited a, a, a virtual reality lab there where they had a well designed eye tracker hooked up to um a system that would actuate a camera with very low latency exactly as someone is 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 moving their eyes. So, what you could do is you could have someone sit there they start moving their eyes around doing the normal saccades and then you can look on a screen and see what the camera sees when it is mimicking exactly the motions of the eye during saccades. That does not sound interesting. So, so when you see these 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 motions it is it looks like um like an absolute mess you know the the, the image is changing constantly there, there should be all kinds of blurring as you as it turns very quickly. Um I found it very difficult to make sense out of the images that come from that by just having a camera that mimics mimics exactly the motions of the eyes in saccades. We do not perceive that right we are doing saccade motions all the time, but we perceive the world as being stationary yet it would be a significant engineering challenge to then take that that um um that video from the camera that is moving all over the place and try to stabilize it in the same way. You could do it with IMUs and and so forth, but um um you have a lot of work ahead of you just to stabilize that image the brain is doing the work already in stabilizing let us say the, the the time sequence the video that is that is coming into our photoreceptors All right. So, I find that very interesting. So, that is one of the one of the um the motions is saccade I am going to talk about pursuit next and then we will take a break in a bit and then I will talk about the remainders after that. So, two smooth pursuit. So, in this case you track a moving visual signal. So, I could take this notebook and move it back and forth and my eyes are tracking it using smooth pursuit. Now, I might also rotate my head some to help that process out. So, so you can combine and very naturally we do combine sometimes head motions with um the smooth pursuit motions, but that is going to lead also to the vestibular ocular reflex which is coming next. But um let us just separate them out very carefully. So, even if you hold your head still there is smooth pursuit. <coughs> so, if for example <coughs> you may be watching a um a tennis match or or a football match you watch the ball go back and forth or of course, a cricket match. Um, and you 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 watch you watch the ball moving and your eyes are tracking that right. Um same thing for a car going by on the street. So, <clears throat> these motions are significantly slower they are less than 30 degrees per second and if you are trying to track something that is faster than that with your eyes what will happen <clears throat> is that some saccades will get mixed in. So, the eye will have to jump ahead to catch up. So, sometimes um so, I will say otherwise 
saccades are added. Saccades are inserted. The main reason for doing this is to reduce motion blur. So, you can this attempts to give a more stable image on the retina as you are moving as not you are moving sorry as the object that you are um, tracking it or whatever features they are as they are moving um, to make that appear to be a stable image to make it look motionless as far as your retina is concerned. Right. Questions about that? Yes. Um, that is very interesting I think that is um that is correct yeah motion blur being in the surroundings however, um if you are tracking it your fovea is aimed at the object of interest that is where you are getting the highest visual acuity and there is a tension your attention is focusing on that right. And so, um yes, but but the focus is not the the, the attention is not there. So, it is not a problem it is very interesting question though why do not we try that during the break. Uh, why do not we do some smooth tracking experiments and see if you notice some kind of blur that is another question do you even would you can you design an experiment where you perceive the blur. Um, but so, so, the brain is relying on attention um to to let us say not worry about that another thing that happens which I did not get to the stereo part yet, but if I converge my eyes to this bottle for example, then everywhere else there are double images it is called diplopia right. Do you notice that very often not really, but now try it put something up there and then at the periphery you will notice there is multiple images it is very obvious once you know to look for it do not look directly at it because then you will focus on something else, but you will converge to something else. But if you just converge on something close and then um, I see two professor monies there out of the side of my eye. So, you know it, it works very, very naturally like that. Anyone else? All right thanks.